Beginning at verse one, and the Bible says, and unto the angel, unto the angel, now we are entering into a new church as we are making our way through the progress reports of churches in Asia. Uh, the Bible says, uh, unto the angel of the church in Sardis, right? One of the things we understand, and by studying Revelation chapter one, the Bible breaks down these definitions and symbols. Uh, so when the Bible says an angel, uh, the Bible is saying to the angel, of the church, we're talking about the minister of that congregation. Uh, we're talking about the servant of that house. And so Jesus is sending a report through John the Apostle to these churches in Asia. And here are, we are in Revelation chapter 3, and we have now entered uh, and we are going to break down the church at Sardis. Uh, and God is speaking uh, to the servant, to the minister uh, of that house. And the Bible says, these things saith he that have the seven spirits uh, of God and the seven stars. Uh, when the Bible says the seven spirits, what he's talking about, there were seven churches in Asia and there were seven uh, ministers that, that Jesus is addressing. And so when the Bible says that the seven spirits uh, and the seven stars, stars uh, there. He's talking about uh, the churches. He's talking about the servants, the ministers. Uh, he's talking about the work that is done uh, in this region. And so the Bible says uh, that all of these things are in his hands. Uh, he that have, uh, we're talking about Jesus. Jesus possesses the church. Jesus doesn't just have a church. Jesus owns the church. The church is his body. And so uh, it is imperative for Jesus to know what's going on in his whole body. Matter of fact, if you're studying Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, it is much like you going to the doctor and getting uh, a, a checkup, right? When you're going to get a, a checkup and they, uh, they, they tell you to get on the they tell you to get on the scale, right? They tell you to get on the scale because they need to find out what's going on with you. And so you get on the scale. And what I had to explain is, no, that ain't the real number. I got shoes on. That's, <laughs> I'm actually a little less than, I had eight before I came, but that's just a little bit uh, later. And then they, they come and they do your height. Uh, they do your height. And I say, I'm much a little, I'm a little taller in the evening uh, than in the morning. <laughs> So just know, like sometimes, depending on the weather, uh, and then they bring you in, uh, and then they start checking your blood pressure, and they start looking in your eyes, and they start looking in your ears, and they, they tell you to uh, uh, stretch out your arm, and they start doing some, uh, some blood tests, and they start uh, drawing uh, some things, and they start uh, looking at all your business, and they start asking you uh, some personal questions, and, and depending on what you're going through, they start asking you what sins you've committed, Committed. When was the last time, uh, amen, Some, when, was the, when, when was the last time you indulged in this? Do you uh, drink? Do you do this? Do you, you know, and you start having to repent and do checkups. <laughs> have, any, have anybody ever had to repent and do checkups at the same time? <laughs> I'm really a Christian, but I just, I had a bad weekend. And so with that, uh, they, they start doing all these checkups and then your report comes out and when your report, and sometimes they may do some x-rays and so they'll put all that up and they'll look at your report and they'll look at everything and they say, uh, and then from there, the doctor will give you a prescription. The doctor will give you, a now you don't have to take the prescription, but the doctor will give you a prescription and says, hey, listen, this is what's going on. And if you don't start making some and if you don't start letting some, hey, and you probably need to do it. And, and sometimes when it's real severe, sometimes when it's real severe, you know what the doctor will do? The doctor will say, you know what? This is beyond me. 
Have anybody ever been in a room where the doctor said, this is beyond me, and what I want to do is I want to refer you. Uh, I want to refer you to a specialist uh, so somebody can be able to look and read these things that's going on. And so when you read in Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 2, and Revelation chapter 3, don't let Revelation scare you. It is just Jesus showing up saying, I'm here to give your prescription, and I don't need to refer you to nobody. I know everything that's going on. Amen. So here we are in chapter three. He says, I know your works. We're at the end of the verse. He says, I know thy works and that you have a name that liveth and are dead. This ain't going to be long this morning. It's going to be real uh, 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 straight to the point. He says, listen, I know what you do. I know the work that you do. I know how you operate. And here's one thing about this church that you really won't find about the other churches. I'm gonna read this in the King James Version. Uh, I, I, I wanna look at it in another translation. Uh, 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 let's look at a New Living Translation, but let me read it in the King James Version. Um, I like the King James Version because it made me feel like I'm royal. Amen. This is how I was raised. Made me feel like I'm royal. Uh, I know thy works, amen. I know thy works and that thou has a name that lives. Don't skip over that. I don't know if you've ever studied that before. I don't know if you've ever read that text before. I don't know if you have ever f focused on that phrase before. He says this, I know you and I know about your name and I know that your name lives. But look at what he says at the end. But really it's dead. Brother Williams, what is he... What does he mean by name? Uh, another way of saying it, can we pull up the other uh, trans, uh, translation? Uh, another way of saying, uh, I know thy name. He says, uh, look at the end of the verse. He says, I know all the things you do. Before I go any further, please don't ever think that you can hide from God. Please, please don't ever think that what you did in the middle of the night as if God went to sleep. Don't ever think that I'm going to wait till God go to sleep and I'm just going to do me and then we both going to wake up in glory. Just know whatever you was doing, what you was doing, God was up watching you. He says, I know all the things you do. And then he says this. I know that you have a reputation. I want to break down uh, reputation. I want to break down reputation so that we all can be on the same, same page. Um, a reputation is how you see me. That's what a reputation is. A reputation is how you view me. A reputation is how you and other people talk about and see me. That's reputation. Now, a reputation doesn't mean that that's really me. Some people may talk about you and they may uh, scandalize your name. Some people make it their agenda to ruin your reputation. So sometimes uh, there are people who go around and say, um, she's selfish, he's arrogant. Uh, I, d I don't like her because she only focuses and thinks about herself. Oh, he's like this, uh, she's like that, he's greedy, uh, she's this. And so uh, people have an idea of you based upon the angle in which they see you. Right? And so sometimes in church, there are some people, uh, they have come to a conclusion about you and they've never spoken to you. There are some of you, you've, you've come to a conclusion about me and we've never had a conversation. 
You've never asked me about my fears. You've never asked me about my pain. You don't know what brought me to this hour. You don't know what broke me. You don't, you don't know how God had to fix my heart back together. You don't know how I've repented. You never heard my prayers in my closet and in my quiet time. You don't know what I study and you don't know what I battle with. You don't know the people who've come at me. You don't know the people that I came at and had to repent. You don't, you don't know how God God has orchestrated storms to change it. And so how I was in 99 was not the same I was in 2009. And 2019 came and turned everything upside down. And then the pandemic came. And then we all had to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and all. Everything got turned. Nobody knows the specific steps of your journey. But they'll just look at you from across the way and be like, I know him. I, I know her, and really, you, you haven't even read the first chapter. You know, I, 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 like, I like movies. I like, I like movies. Uh, and I like, I like to go to the movies uh, in the middle of the day. I like to go to, tell them, tell them my secrets. I like to go to the movies in the middle of the day. And it's an ego thing. I just want to let you know, like, it's an ego thing. I go in the middle of the day, and I go with nobody in there. Especially like when I'm having a rough week. Amen. Stuff coming at me. I like to go in the middle of the day, one o'clock, two o'clock. Everybody at Target, at work, we're doing other stuff, right? And I like to go in, and uh, when nobody's in there, I like to get a seat, like right in the middle. And I like to go to like the the movie theaters where they serve you. Amen. I mean, you can go to the regular, you know, the movie theaters and go sit down and you go get your popcorn and go sit down. I don't, I don't sometimes like if I'm not feeling, I don't really like that. I like to kind of, I like, I like the, when they come and they ask me, you know what I, and yes, I want some strawberry lemonade and give me some cookies and stuff like that. I like to, I like to do that. Uh, and so I, I do all that uh, and I do all that. And so, um, and the reason why I like doing that, and the reason I like doing that is because I like to only do it for like an hour and a half. But what I tell myself is, this my house. <laughs> and I, I envision like I live here. And I push the button and I envision my butler coming in. <laughs> And so what I do is I kind of, I get in the character and I say, uh, Garcon, I need a, <laughs> Garcon, I need, I need this. Yes, I'm ready to go ahead and take that away. And, and I, I like to, I like to feel like I'm engulfed in this, in this space, right? And I like how, I like the, I like the, the ones where you push the little button and then your, your, it, you know, it rise, <laughs> it rise. But at the real nice ones, at, at the real nice ones, you can hit the little mini button and sometimes it'll warm, <laughs> it'll warm you up. And so sometimes I, I'm sitting there and, and, and I, I, like, I like that experience, right? I, I like that experience and it, and it, and it makes me feel good. It makes, me, it makes me feel good. The problem is I don't really live like that. Just for an hour and 45 minutes. I don't, I, don't really I don't really live like that. It's just, a, it's just the appearance that I like, to, I like to feel. The problem is uh, I live differently than how I'm, I'm acting if you saw me, if I'm in the place. Right? Reputation is not reality. Some of y'all feel real good about your reputation. I'm well respected in the community. Matter of fact, to have a good reputation, you actually got to work real hard. So if you got a good reputation in the community, we commend you. Because many times you got to work, you got to work real hard to have a good reputation. And imagine when everybody goes and they speak well of you. Oh, you talking about her? Oh, she's so lovely. And she's so kind. And she's so nice. And she's this. And oh, he is that. And you know what? He does this. And, he, and everywhere you go, matter of fact, you know what you want? You want at your funeral, 
You know what you want at your funeral? You want people. Matter of fact, if, if I passed away and you ain't got nothing good to say, don't get on the mic. I only want people, right? You only call people up that's going to speak, that's going to speak well. Have you ever been to a funeral and somebody got on the mic and be like, well, uh, <laughs> so flip of the coin, uh, pray God have mercy. This was, he was a wild one, wasn't he? <laughs> he was a wild one, wasn't he? <laughs> okay, well, just uh, have mercy and sit down. No, 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 if I, I want somebody to speak, I want somebody to speak well. And when somebody gets up and they speak well, that's reputation but it's not the reality. So here's what God says to the church of Sardis. I heard about your reputation. I want you to know that Jesus is so intimate with you. He not only knows your thoughts, he also knows the thoughts of people that they have about you. We serve such a God that he gets down and he's so intimate with you, but he also hears the whispers around you and comes back to you. God is so good that God told the church of Sardis, I know you and I know what people think about you. This is why it's so important for us to be able to pray to God, because God knows everything that you're going through. God knows every one of your enemies. God knows every one of your foes. God knows the things that you're dealing with and the things that you're fighting with. You don't ever have to worry about God not knowing. He says, I know your reputation. But look at what he says this. I know all the things you do and that you have a reputation for being alive. Oh, y'all alive. You're a lively church. You know one of them churches, you like, oh, I want to go to that church because they got a reputation of being alive. This church has a reputation in the city for being robust, alive and active. They do a lot at that church. He says, I know, I know your reputation, but look at what he says at the end. But actually, you're a dead church. On the outside, with men's eyes, on the outside looking in, you're the place to be. But as I've investigated you, there's no power in this church. Have you ever been in a place where everybody is raising hands and saying glory, hallelujah, and everybody's swaying back and forth, and when service is over with, everybody gets back in the car cussing, fighting and drinking and still doing the same, and there's no power in the service. Nobody's convicted. Nobody repents. They say, oh, wasn't it a wonderful service? And it's a collection of gifts. And there are so many gifted. Oh, the singers were gifted. And the prayer, uh, uh, those who led in prayer were gifted. And those who uh, sang, they were gifted. And there were so many intelligent and gifted people. Got, and they got a reputation of doing so much. But when they did the diagnostic, they say, this is dead. And Jesus is giving the report. He says, your reputation is that you're alive, but really that you're dead. Brother Williams, what does that look like? Um, he, got his, he got his wife and they went online. He found his suit, she found her dress. The inseam matched his inseam of his, and they color coordinated. They got the kids. Uh, she made clothes for the kids, and all of them lined up. They got a professional photographer. They got a, a professional photographer, and they lined up. Uh, they took care of the background uh, and the seat, and everybody lined up real nice, and they took a picture. And I want to let you know, it was so cute. Oh, it was. 
Oh, it was so beautiful. Before she got the picture, she went to the hairdresser. She got her hair laid, right? She got her, she got, she got her hair laid. He went, he went to the barber. He got his, uh, he got his hair cut. Everything was lined up. And when they went, and they went, and had the kids all lined up. They had to stay there for about an hour because sometimes the picture just wasn't quite right, and they didn't get the lighting, and they got lighting and got everything together and got everything lined up, and they took the picture. Oh, you should have seen it. When they took the pic, it was a beautiful picture. I mean, it was elegant. I mean, when you look at the picture, matter of fact, it would be like relationship or family goals. You would say, I want a family like that. And what you couldn't tell, what you couldn't tell from the picture is you couldn't tell that the children were being molested. I mean, it was a beautiful picture. Oh, I mean, I mean the garments and how it laid and the, how the background matched with the suit and the socks and the hat. Oh, everything was laid. And it was so beautiful. And then they did a location picture. And the location picture was just as elegant. And, je and the wind was blowing. And the sun was just right uh, that day. And you couldn't tell. You, you couldn't tell from the picture that the husband was, was dealing with depression. He was suffering. Sometimes you have depression. Sometimes you can suffer from depression. And sometimes you can suffer from depression so badly, the only thing that you're able to do is get up, go to work, and go home. But the idea sometimes of getting out of the bed and sometimes eating is a work. Sometimes even showering and taking care of yourself is such a work. And some people who struggle with depression, they work real hard to give the appearance. And you have no idea that on the inside of the house, it's dead. And when they walk out of the house, I'm talking about the car is clean. I'm talking about the shoes are clean. I'm talking about sometimes uh, depressed people smile the brightest outside. Sometimes, sometimes depressed people can be the life of the party to throw you off. All right, now y'all gonna, gonna come back. All right, it's good time. And they close that door. And it's pain and it, it can be sorrow. You couldn't, you couldn't tell. You couldn't tell by the picture. You, could, you couldn't tell by how she was, because all her kids were dressed so, and if you looked at her, matter of fact, you want to talk to her. I know you want to talk to her, and the reason why you want to talk to her is because you want to get advice. Girl, how do you do it, and how do you manage? And you just got your house together, and you got your family together. Your kids are all just, per all of them getting straight A's, and all of them uh, walk straight, all their teeth straight, all their eyes straight, uh, no hairs out of place. You just got your whole family and she's sitting there, and you can't tell by the picture, you can't tell by the picture that she actually is struggling to even care for her children. She has the secret that she actually doesn't even want this family no more. She can't say that out loud. You can't say that you don't want your children. Out loud. <laughs> you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't say that out loud. You can't, you, can't, you can't say that you don't want this relationship. Out loud. <laughs> it's, it's in, and she's taking the pill, and she's beautiful. Oh, it's flowing. And she's... And she straightens up. Everybody ready? And you can't tell from the outside that on the inside, it's dead. I like Jesus. Because Jesus ain't going to just let you. Some people can see you and they can know something wrong, but they say, you know what, that ain't my business. And unless you say something, I, you know, I, but I, I can tell like it ain't what, you, what you're advertising. See, you advertising jelly, but when we opened it up, it was pickles. 
your, your advertisement and your content is different. And so uh, Jesus talks about this uh, a, a little bit more. Uh, uh, go to Matthew chapter 23. Uh, before Jesus went to the cross, Jesus talked about this. In Matthew chapter 23, and I want us to look at verse 23. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 23. Jesus speaks to the scribes and the Pharisees who practiced this. And the Bible says in verse 23, Woe unto you, you scribes and you Pharisees. And then notice what he, he calls them. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. He says, you hypocrites. Now, here's what a hypocrite is before we read any further. It's one thing if you think I'm something that I never promote. This is just your thought. Your reputation, that's why uh, I, wanna, I, I, wanna, I wanna lay this on everybody's heart. Don't get wrapped up in the feed and other people's reputation. Sometimes people will tell you what they think about you and you'll spend your whole life trying not to let them down based upon their imagination of you. And some people's imagination went too far. They went Disney on you. They, they went Cartoon Network on you and they didn't made you into a superhero. And there you are, you sacrificing your peace and you over there bending backwards because you don't ever want them to see a chink in your armor. You don't ever want them to see you in a vulnerable state. And so you trying to make sure that they always see you flying and with your cape. Uh, but every now, your cape needs to be washed and you, you've been wearing them tights too long and they got a little stench to them and you got yesterday stains on them and you need to be able to take that uniform off and be yourself. Don't ever get wrapped up and that's, and that's where you hear some people say, well, what are people going to think about us? Hey, if you in need of help, the last thing that you need to be worried about is what another person thinks about you. Do you know how many families didn't receive the help that they needed because to all of their friend, family and friends, they were, the, they were the ideal family. They were the best couple and they needed to shout for help, but they couldn't shout for help in their own community because they valued other people's opinions over the need. Sometimes your children need help and they crying out for help, and you tell them to hush, be quiet, because we care about what they think of and what they say about us. And if we go and get, and because sometimes, sometimes your child may need some medical help. Sometimes your child may need some psychological help. Sometimes there's a, there's a disconnect and something's wrong. And if anybody finds out, they gonna make fun or they gonna laugh or, oh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't think y'all was dealing with something like, who cares what you think? If I'm in need, I gotta call 911. Hey, tell the police to pull behind in the alley. I don't want anybody seeing that we got any problems. Do you know the police don't care? They don't care. They don't, they don't really care about what you think, and they don't care about what the neighbors think. They will come with them Christmas lights all down your road and, and keep them bright. You be like, hey, can you cut them down just a little bit? Hey, you don't need them sirens. You, you, don't need, you can cut that down. Shh, just come on inside. We got a little issue. We want to talk to you. Quiet. No, no, no. And, and they'll, they'll talk to you right on your lawn. Lights blazing. What's the problem? What's going on? Everybody come on outside. And, 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 and you embarrassed. And sometimes, sometimes, God sends help, and we push the help away because you care about how other people think about you. And, it, and it's not even reality. It's not even the truth. So you know what a hypocrite is? A hypocrite is one thing that if you think something of me, that's one thing, if you think something of me and it may not be true, that's not a hypocrite. 
right? Uh, if you thought I lived in the mansion and you showed up and it wasn't, that's your fault. I ain't asked you. you. He said, we going, we going over Brother Williams and we finna eat good. Now, when I pull out bologna, when I pull out bologna sandwiches and you, and you acting disappointed, that's your fault. I never advertise steak. Right? And, and for dessert, we got oatmeal cookies. Right? And so with that, if you disappointed, that's your fault. It's another thing. It's another thing. This is what a hypocrite is. A hypocrite is somebody who advertised something they know they don't have. They feed into the reputation. And when people say, um, do y'all have some? You say yes when your answer should have been no. You feed into the lie. You keep promoting the lie because you like the attention from the reputation. You like how when you walk in the room, how everybody's eyes get bright. Oh, you're here. Or, or you like the idea, and this is why some people struggle with church, because you like the idea that you've never fallen. And so that's why sometimes it's exciting to go to a new city and go to a new church and go to a new place, because guess what? Nobody knows you, and you can walk around as if you've never fallen. And when people ask, you know, you know I'm going through this, uh, you're a hypocrite when you act appalled at your sin. The person sitting across from you can commit the same sin you commit. You're not a hypocrite because you're quiet. You're a, you're a, hypocrite, a hypocrite because you act appalled and shocked. <gasps> Wait a minute, that's what you do. Your hypocrisy is actually in hiding the truth. Not that you don't say anything, you may not say anything, you may not participate, or whatever, but your hypocrisy is that you hide the truth and you try to throw people off by giving them a picture that matches their imagination even though it's not your reality. And if you're broken, you just need to be broken because we can't pray for you if you're walking around and appearing whole. Mechanics don't show up and they don't provide their services to brand new cars. If the car is appearing to be brand new and a mechanic says, well, call me if you need me but this is really not my audience. My audience are those who've been on the road and they had some wear and tear and I work on those. If you, if you out here driving and walking like you are brand new and you fresh out the package, then you wonder why you don't get as many prayers. Are people asking what's going on? And you about to cry and if you see somebody come, you're like, <laughs> And if you give in this face all the time, no, we're not praying for you. Because every time I see you, you're giving me the thumbs up. Hey, all right, what's going on? You good? You good? I'm good too. All right, see you next time. And, and if you're always doing that every time, then we don't, we don't know, minister. We don't know what to say. We got to ask 15,000 questions just to break your code of hypocrisy. He says this. You hypocrites, uh, go to verse 24. You blind gods with strain at the gnat and you swallow the camel. Verse 25, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup. I want you to get these few points and then we'll close. Uh, some of you, um, you may not know or realize on how to wash dishes. Uh, some of you may just put it in a dishwasher or something like that. But uh, for those of you, like back in the day, we used to wash dishes, uh, back in the day. Uh, back in the day, we used to wash dishes. And so what you do, uh, and some of you may not know what I'm about to say, but you would get a rag. I don't know, you may not know what a rag or, or, or dish towel, yeah. And so you, you would get that. And so you put soap in it. 
I'm just trying to help some people. Uh, you put soap in it and you put it in the water. And so what you would do is if you if you are washing a cup, if you're washing a cup, one of the things you want to do is you want to get inside of it and you want to you want to clean that that thing around. I know you don't know because you push the buttons. I know you do. You just push the buttons. Uh, <laughs> but if you get in there, you want to you want to make sure that you clean and you go around and you get that. You want to get in there real good. You want to get in there real good. And after you clean on the inside, then also what you want to do is you want to clean on the outside. And, and then what you want to do is you want to rinse that off. You want to rinse that off. Uh, and, then, and, then, and then you don't want to just set it on the counter uh, uh, because it's, uh, if you, you know, you don't walk around air drying. Don't air dry the, <laughs> don't air dry the dishes. So you get a, uh, it's a thing that they call, uh, they call it a drying towel. Uh, so you, those of you who may not know, uh, it's a drying towel. So you get the drying towel. And so you not only dry the outside, but you want to get on the inside and you want to dry that and take up all of the water. And then what you want to do, because you don't want to just sit it out uh, on the counter, all right? I'm not trying to be petty. I'm not trying to be petty. Uh, but, but you want to take it and then you want to put it up in its proper place because it just don't stay on the counter for days and weeks uh, and months on end. And so you want to take that and you want to go ahead and put that, uh, put that in the cupboard. Uh, and he says, he says, let me tell you what you're doing. Jesus says, you only clean the outside of the cup. So when we look in the cup, you got all that. He said, that's how you look to me. And when I see the work that you do, you're so focused on giving the appearance that you're good. That none of y'all are working on the heart. You're not doing the inner work. So the church look real good on the outside. But everybody's just as sinful and dark and carnal and worldly on the end. And then you realize, wait a minute, we really not praying. We really not in the word and lives are not really being changed. And nobody's really coming to Christ. Nobody's letting the things of the world go. The same things that you did before you got baptized, you still doing right now. And what we're doing is we're just slapping church on it and making it re look real good on the outside. But there's no real change on the inside. He says, for you may clean the outside of the cup. You cleaning the outside of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Verse 26. You blind Pharisee. Cleanse first. <laughs> I like Jesus. Because Jesus is gonna tell you how to wash dishes. <laughs> Jesus tell you, for those of you who don't know, this is how you wash dishes. Jesus is gonna tell you how you wash dishes. Uh, you blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is. When you go home this week and you in, you're, you're over the counter, say the word of God, as you're washing dishes, say the word of God is real. You clean the inside and within the cup and the platter that the outside of them may be clean. See, it ain't clean if you're only cleaning the outside. And you're not good just because you look good. The Bible says in verse 27, he says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, because you hypocrites, for you are like unto whitened sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful on the outward. He says, this is, this is what you like. This is what you like. Um, there's this beautiful casket, and the handles are made of pure gold. There's engravings on the top, and it's, it's etched by the finest uh, carvers uh, in the world. Um, uh, the, the casket is also made of marble that we imported, right? And it had to be cured. And I tell you all the, and on each, on, on each corner are diamonds and rubies on the outside. Uh, and I tell you uh, that, that also uh, there, is a, there is a trim, and the trim is made of velvet, uh, and it's made of fine, fine linen. And I was ta talking about all the details, 
And then what you would tell me is, well, Brother Williams, you know you're talking about a, a casket. That you put so much work on the outside of the casket, but on the inside, it's death on the inside. And I don't care how much effort and work you put on the outside, that won't make what's on the inside come alive. It's still full of dead men's bones. And Jesus says, that's how I see you. And can I tell you, you take beautiful pictures. Oh, it's beautiful. And sometimes, so you can throw people off the trail, you teach you and your whole family, y'all be quiet. Now, I don't believe that you should be telling everything about it that's going on in the house. That ain't everybody's business. But some secrets have destroyed families. And the children get older and they've learned. And sometimes they get their own families and they try to go into new families, but they don't know how to talk. So not only, were they, not only were they hurt and broken as a child growing up because they could never express their pain, they start new families and new families uh, to the point where they're hurting the next generation because they really don't know how to express and they don't know how to talk. And when they need help, they don't know how to ask for help because they've been suppressing for so long. What we know how to do is take great pictures but we don't know how to actually be whole. He says, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. So let's come to the conclusion of the prescription. If you turn your Bibles back to Revelation chapter three, and we'll come to the conclusion of the prescription. In Revelation chapter three and beginning at verse one, the Bible reads, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, and that you have a name that livest but are dead. You have a reputation that is known, but you're dead. Then Jesus gives his advice in verse 2. You need to be watchful and strengthen the things that remain because they are almost dead also. <laughs> I like Jesus. Jesus says, you keep acting like everything is okay and what you don't realize is that your house is dying. If you don't stop right now, if, if you don't stop right now and, and be watchful. Uh, let, me, let me get the other translation because um, some, some of you don't, don't get be watchful. And I'm going to try to close on this uh, if I can get the, the other translation. Wake up. Jesus says, if you don't wake up, you're going to lose your house. You're going to lose your family. You're going to lose your kids. You're going to use your, you're going to lose your home. You're going to use your, your blessings. All the things that I had for you, you're going to, you're going to miss them. The life that, that you're living, you don't know that there's a cancer on your life and it's slowly killing and decaying everything that you love. And you think you still have them because on the outside, you look beautiful. And the compliments, it's like a, it's like a woman or a man that gets on social media and they keep taking pictures just for the likes only to put down their phone and cry all night long because I have nobody that really cares about me. You can't even trust the life. So you get it just for your ego. But really, there's a problem. And if you don't wake up, it's only going to get worse. Jesus says, wake up. 
This church is sleep, and you got to wake up. Jesus is coming soon. You acting Christian. You got to really be one. Because if you don't really be one, when I show up, nobody going to be laughing. You keep taking church for granted. You keep taking this word for granted. You act like my law don't have consequences. You got to make a decision. Are you going to live this life or go do something else? But you can't play with me. You got to wake up. And he says, strengthen what little remains. I'm, we talked about last week. Hey, I'm giving you some space to get your stuff together because you're playing. He says, strengthen what little remains for even what is left is almost dead. You ain't going to do nothing. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. I'm looking at what you do, and you're doing just enough so people can leave you alone. And you forget that people are not your judge. I am, and I know everything you're doing. He says in verse 3, Go back. You know what repentance is? Repentance means to stop. Now, if you've never stopped, you've never repented. Repentance, if you in something, that means you got to get out of it. If you never got out of it, then what you did is you stayed in it and justified why you never left. You lied to yourself and you deceiving yourself and you made it, you made what was sin good. You changed the scripture and you called what was ungodly, you called it righteous. And because you kept calling it righteous, you deceived yourself and you made what was unholy, holy. But when the Lord returns, he's going to remove the veil and he's going to take the sheets off and he's going to remove the clothing. He's going to remove the lighting. He's going to strip your clothing and he's going to look down at the, like when you go into a doctor's office, the doctor says, take all that off. I don't care that you came in with high heels and your dress and you came in with your suitcase and I don't care how important you are. You know what they do? They give you this little uh, cheap paper gown and they say, take everything off, put that on. We finna look at everything. Thing. We don't care where you came from. Just a few weeks ago, uh, a celebrity, Jamie Foxx, uh, was in the hospital coming out now talking completely different because it does not matter how much money you make and it does not matter how many awards and achievements you make and it does not matter that we all think that you're uh, uh, the, the, the best thing since sliced bread. When the Lord strips all that away, and he starts looking at your thoughts and your deeds. And he starts looking at your heart. Are you a real worshiper? Are you a real servant? Are you really coming for me? Or are you doing your own thing? And he's going to look at the intent of your heart. He told him, go back to what you heard. Hey, go back to the word. I don't care about your schedule. Some of y'all are too busy. You, you're going to be so busy, you're going to miss heaven. Well, Brother Williams, I got a busy schedule. Then something about your schedule, need, somebody needs to be disappointed this week because you're too busy. You're extremely too busy. You're too busy to pray. You're too busy to study with your children. You're too busy, busy to study with your spouse. Y'all don't pray together. There's no fasting. Uh, there's no seeking God. There's no, there's no journaling. There's no, you, you make no time to, you're too busy. You so busy, you so productive on the outside, but you dead on the inside. He said, go back to what you heard and believed at first. Go back to when you first got saved and start acting like that. 
That's what Jesus said. Go back. You remember when you first got baptized? I want you to think about, wake up. I want you to think about when you first got baptized. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go back and I want you to start from there. And you remember when you first got your first Bible and you remember when you got it engraved and it had your name on it and you just knew then after the engraving, I'm going to heaven now. And you kept it underneath your shoulder and you remember on lunch break, you used to study your word and you remember you had your journal and you used to take notes and you remember when you used to pray and you remember you have built up the courage to talk to your family and you start telling everybody about Jesus Christ and you remember when people start talking about you and they start calling you a Jesus freak and they say well what's wrong with you and you got this little Jesus bug hey before you got comfortable in Christianity and before you start taking uh, communion for granted and before you started uh, going to the bathroom doing song service and before and, remember, and before you started skipping worship service and before you start skipping uh, 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 times of prayer before all of that go back to when Jesus was fresh with you now listen if Jesus said you can go back you can go back you just got to wake up. And then he says, repent. You got to repent. Complacency is a sin. If God expected you to be here and you still here, if God expected you to be there and you still here, then here becomes sinful. If God expects you to, to bring your family along to this point, but y'all still back here, then back here becomes ungodly. At one point, it was a blessing because you used to be over there. But then you, you were growing, you were excited. But somewhere along the line, you got real comfortable. He says, you need to repent and turn to me again. <sighs> Let me say this. This is not me talking, it's Jesus talking. If you don't wake up, Man, I want you to wake up. Man, you gotta wake up. You gotta wake up, you gotta wake up, you gotta wake up, because you think you got time. You think you're gonna see old age. You think you got next year. You think you, I'm trying to tell you, man, if you don't wake up, I'm gonna come faster to you. Jesus, how you gonna come? I'm gonna come like an unexpected thief. Now, I know some of them. They be showing <laughs> Now, I, they be showing up. The Lord says, I'm going to come to you quickly. This is the portion of service where the sermon is over. And this is the part where we pray for one another. This is the part of service that if you need us to pray for you, if you need us to call your name before God, this is the opportunity for you to do it. The Lord is praying for His church that we might all Sure.